Welcome to the Blind Mole. I'm Joby. And I am Mole. Today we're going to be diving deep into the dark with the Dark Knight, the Caped Crusader, the Batman. Is there a more compelling and interesting mysterious figure in all superherodom? Today we want to focus on the Caped Crusader's theme songs. So the original theme was done by Neil Hefty. Not Danny Elfman. A lot of people say Danny Elfman, right? Negative. Neil Hefty, 1966, the Batman TV series, brings us the classic, the eternal, Neil Hefty Batman theme. You know how to call Batman to dinner? How do you do that, Dan? Dinner, 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 <laughs> dinner, 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 Batman. So that's the original theme, Neil Hefty, 1966. Unforgettable, unforgettable. And then we wait 30 years until the uh, immortal Danny Elfman theme comes in, into Batman's, into Michael Keaton's Batman. 1989. So this is where we're introduced into Tim Burton and Danny Elfman's Batman. It was their third collaboration. They had already done Pee Wee, Big Adventure, and Beetlejuice. They hadn't done Edward Scissorhands yet. And so Batman was really the, the, the first big production that Elfman had ever worked on. And there's a cool story that Elfman tells how when he started on this project, he realized there was no template. The only template that existed in soundtrack at the time was John Williams. And he knew Batman wouldn't fit John Williams' heroic, uh, charismatic themes. He needed something darker, uh, something more ominous, something more foreboding perhaps, and he gave us this. This is the theme that would be used in the greatest cartoon of all time. Batman the Animated Series. Oh, what a yeah. show! And that's the opening song as you just, you'll hear it here. Nineteen ninety-five. Enter Batman Forever. This is the good stuff. We're talking Kilmer. We're talking Jim Carrey. We're talking Seal, Kissed by a Rose. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Tommy Lee Jones. The theme, you may have forgotten, was done by a guy named Elliot Goldenthal, who, kind of a no-namer, he did Demolition Man, Heat. He got an, right. he, he actually won an Oscar for Best Original Score for Frida, which, oh yeah. My parents wouldn't let me watch that, first of all, I'm pretty sure. So we got Batman Forever, and the theme is very different, very iconic. You probably have forgotten it, but once we play it here, you'll recognize it immediately. So fun fact, in Batman Forever, uh, bat nipples were introduced to the character. Costume design said it was reminiscent of the Greek gods, apparently, because who wouldn't want nipples on a Greek god statue such as Batman? And they persisted into Batman and Robin, a movie and soundtrack so bad that the score was never actually released commercially. Which is mind-blowing considering the casting for that film. It was George Clooney, Chris O'Donnell, Alicia Silverstone, Uma Thurman, and Mr. Universe himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger. But the score just couldn't lift this star-studded cast to the bat heights, you know, that it needed. Even my brother, who loves puns more than anyone on Earth, cannot stomach this movie. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. Very nice. All right, everyone. Chill. Cool party. It's a cold town. Allow me to break the ice. Hiatus. Batman and Robin, the Batman theme is lying low for a while because no one dares touch Batman after the terrible, terrible nipple Batman. <laughs> 2005, 
Batman Begins comes out with the legendary Christopher Nolan. Before Inception, this is before the other Dark Knights, this is before Dunkirk, you think before Interstellar, you think Zimmer, Nolan, Zimmer, Nolan, right? This hadn't really happened yet. It was one of their first collaborations. Zimmer says, hey, buddy. I don't know if he calls Nolan buddy. Buddy, what's up? Hey, buddy. What's up, Hans? He says, hey, Christopher, why don't you let me bring in James Newton Howard? Because I've been wanting to do a project with him for a long time. And talk about a duo. I mean, this is like Michael Jordan being like, hey, let me call in Magic Johnson, you know? It's like Luke Skywalker saying, hey, let me call in Obi-Wan. Or it's like Batman saying, hey, Robin, let's go fight crime. So those two come in and, and they produce the, the next Batman theme. Fun fact about Batman Begins is the soundtracks were named after different types of bats, spelling out the word Batman with the first letter of each title. Kind of like those nifty little plaques your mom gets you for your birthday that say your name and then an adjective describing some positive attribute about you. And how you'll name your next kid, I might add. What the hell are you? In 2008, The Dark Knight, Nolan brings back his dynamic duo, Hans Zimmer, James Newton Howard, and they produce even more themes, right? You've got Batman's theme returning. You have the Joker's new theme, which I know this is a story about Batman, but we've got to play just as far as the Joker's theme. It's a single note played on a cello. Zimmer said, I wanted to write something people would truly hate. Another fun fact about that movie, Batman's theme is only heard twice in The Dark Knight. You would think you'd hear it more times, but Zimmer and James Newton Howard did not want you to focus on the heroic theme. They wanted you to focus on the conflicted city of Gotham and how dark and overwhelming the Joker felt in the movie. So that brings us to the fourth era of Batman in cinema with Batman v Superman in 2016. Zimmer partnered up with Junkie XL and he's a DJ, the guy that composed what? Mad Max. One of the best soundtracks you've never heard. If you've never heard it, oh my gosh. Go listen to Brothers in Arms. So cool. That gave the Batman a very different feel uh, in this film. A little bit more electronic, a little more rock, kind of uh, edgy kind of feel to it. Zimmer totally redid what he thought about Batman. It's really cool. Has a composer ever been asked to compose different themes for the same character? I don't think it's ever happened mm. before. Every time John Williams does an Indiana Jones movie, it's the same thing. Yeah. Every time there's a Star Wars movie, he gets to reuse his themes. Zimmer created a new theme for Batman. Another thing to know about Zimmer is after Wonder Woman, another great score he did, Zimmer said he was done with superhero movies. So that left the studio with a little bit of a conundrum with Justice League coming out the following year. So who do they hire to compose Justice League? Bringing back the Elf Man. 
a full circle. It's so cool. So they bring back Danny Elfman. I couldn't believe it. I went to the movie and I was I was watching the credits. I was like, I wonder who they got to compose it. I thought they'd just do some temp track guy. And it was Danny Elfman. And in the movie, Justice League, you can hear a number of times his old Batman theme. So it's like you're in Zimmer's world, this world that his score created, and you can hear his score that Elfman kind of bases his on, but you hear Elfman's Batman theme. Not only did you hear Elfman's Batman theme, you hear John Williams' Superman theme a couple times, which is so cool. Epic combo. My mind was just like... And then Danny Elfman threw down the ultimate challenge for Batman musical supremacy, saying, You will not hear a new theme for Batman. Batman has only had one theme. Shove it, Zimmer. Is yeah, what he's what the saying, heck? right? I, I'm sure Zimmer has. Uh, it's like Zimmer's like, I, I've, I've made two themes, just to let you know. <laughs> just so you know. Get and Mr. Hefty can't be happy. I mean, his name makes you think of black garbage bags, not even Batman. Holy rusted metal, Batman. Kapow. We're bringing you back, Mr. Hefty. Thanks for joining us on this Batman adventure going through the four eras of Batman cinematic musical history. So, what's your favorite? Tell us in the comments below, smash the subscribe button, like, and tell us what you think. Peace.